Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. What's going on YouTube, Diggy546? Definitely hit that subscribe button if you're new. Like the video if you like the video. And I won't tell if you click that bell. But let's go ahead and get into this. So this is gonna be the preview on the Washington football team. This is a team that we have pretty much hyped up all offseason as the, the team that was the team to beat. But it seems like from the first week that the Washington football team and the Giants look like they're at the bottom of the division. Judging week one's game. But there's a lot more football to be played. Let's get straight into it. But first, let's have a quick word from our sponsor, BetQL. Want to get an advantage over your sports book? You need to download BetQL. Their best bets algorithm scans over 350,000 bets per year to give you a best bet recommendation for every game across all major sports with reason why you should place the bet. Their model covers everything from spreads to over-unders to player prop bets. Don't want to use the model? They've got you covered with sharp data so you can see who the pros are backing and line movement so you can jump on betting opportunities in real time. They've got team summaries highlighting previous success against the spread and over under with breaking news on lineups and injury status. Obviously, that helps with fantasy. And you can track how your past bets have done and where you rank on leaderboards. Head to the App Store or Google Play Store now to download BetQL. You can also head to try.betql.co slash diggy to get started now. Enter code diggy at checkout to get 25% of all of their subscriptions. All of this information can be found in the description where you can also find their BetMGM offer that'll get you a free year of BetQL. If you live in an eligible state, you'll find free offers for your favorite sports books. I won't tell if you click that bell, but I will tell if you miss out on this opportunity with BetQL. BetQL's best bets algorithms actually went 13 and two on five-star bets for week one NFL games between Thursday and Sunday. Don't miss out on your chance to beat your sports book by using all of those BetQL offers in the description. So let's start this game off by talking some defense. Um, I have a film session that's gonna be coming out later today or you know, around the same time as this video if it's not already up on the channel now. But they're coming off of a loss to Justin Herbert and when you look at it, just to give a quick summary, the Chargers and Justin Herbert, they got the ball out of his hands quick. They got the ball to people in space, let them make plays after they touch the football. This would be a great game for Kadarius Tony to finally have a good game. Uh, so th they got the ball out of their hands really quick and made plays after they caught the ball in the open field, which is something that we have struggled with in this offense, getting yards after the catch. I did make a video that some people just confused with me saying that I'm a big Jason Garrett supporter. He does struggle getting the ball into people's hands on the move, uh, even in the short game. So we have got to figure out a way to get some yak. If we're going to throw short passes, we have to figure out a way to make those short passes end up being big plays. Uh, Justin Herbert got rid of the ball in 2.61 seconds. His average time to throw the ball was 2.61 seconds for week one, which was really fast. But Daniel Jones actually got rid of the ball week one in 2.58 seconds, which explains why the offensive line looked so much better pass blocking. And if Daniel Jones is able to get rid of the ball in that amount of time consistently, it shows that his, his process may be speeding up in his head and he can make these decisions quicker. Because when I first looked at the Justin Herbert tape, I said, there's no way that DJ is going to be able to make these decisions this quick and get rid of the ball this fast in an offense that's kind of handcuffing them. But I mean, when you look at the, when you look at the tape uh, for the Giants and when you look at the numbers, Daniel Jones actually did get rid of the ball faster than Justin Herbert week one. So this is going to be the second straight week where we're going to be able to get rid of the ball very quick. Um, the, the Washington football team in that game played Bimba don't break defense. And for the most part, they were able to stand up in the red zone. There were two red zone drops from Keenan Allen and Mike Williams that forced them to kick field goals. So it, the Chargers really went up and down the field, and because of the lack of their execution, they missed out on points. The Giants have got to do what the Chargers did, and they've got to be able to capitalize when they get down there in the red zone, which I think if you look at the Giants uh, early on in that game before they started forcing things, and we saw the couple of plays that the Giants ran in the red zone in the fourth quarter against the Broncos, 
and we've got to come up with something better than that because if we're able to drive the length of the field on this defense, we have got to cash in. Another thing I saw was a lot of two safeties deep for Washington. Uh, they played a lot of man coverage, uh, but they also played a lot of man coverage at times with only one safety deep and kind of left guys on islands. This is when the Chargers took their shots. They actually pretty much dropped or just weren't able to connect on every single one of their shots. They have a lot of confidence in their two corners. They have Cam Curl back there, and he looked pretty good. I'm not going to lie. He looked pretty good making plays, uh, kind of being a rover in the middle of the field for them. He looked pretty good for them. Uh, I just want to use a boxing analogy for this. The Washington football team against the Chargers, the Chargers kept on hitting them with those short passes, with those passes that, that were getting people plays after the catch, and kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it, and then Washington comes up, and they try to play more aggressive, and that's when they left people one-on-one -on -one and man coverage. I mean, and, and the Chargers just couldn't capitalize. I mean, drop passes, uh, miscommunications. Uh, there was a couple of times, I guess, the throw was just a little bit off. But overall, the Washington football team was able to get away with the defense they played. I think if they leave a guy like Galladay one-on-one, -on -one, if they even leave Slayton one-on-one, -on -one, who's had his struggles, I think you just got to take those shots. Just take the shots. When they're there, when there's one-on-one -on -one coverage, if there's not one-on-one -on -one coverage and they're playing that kind of, they're kind of playing off and letting people catch stuff underneath, do that all day. Try to get some yak. Again, this is a perfect game for Kadarius Tony to finally get the wheels turning. We all know their defensive line. I mean, we all know the defensive line. Chase Young, Tim Settle, and I'm I'm not naming guys in, in order of significance, but Chase Young, Tim Settle, uh, Montez Sweat, Deron Payne, Jonathan Allen, Ionitis. They, they got a ton of guys that can get after the passer, which is why you saw Justin Herbert throwing the ball pretty much as soon as the play started a ton of times. Uh, I, I guess a couple of times Justin Herbert ended up scrambling, so that, that number could be inflated. But you got to get rid of the football quick. I did see that defensive line winning their matchups, but the ball was just always gone. So we have got to make sure we get rid of the football. And because of that, I really think that this defensive line is, is really great rushing the passer, but I think they can be had in the run game. I have seen some of these interior guys be there and kind of get pushed around by a weaker Giants offensive line in years past with uh, Saquon Barkley running, running, the, running the heck out of the ball against the Washington football team. And I think that they can be had in the run game. I'm not sure if Saquon is ready to be that dominant player in week two because he missed a couple of holes. He's been rusty. He's been out of the game. He's still working his way back. But I think a combination of Saquon Barkley and Devontae Booker, if we can get between 85 and 100 yards, I think that we've done a good enough job at establishing the, the run. And that'll just open up things for everything else. I expect to see a lot of short passes again. Please, Jason Garrett, get the ball in the hands of Kadarius Tony in open field in the pass game. Get the ball in the hands of Saquon Barkley in the open field in the pass game. Get the ball in the hands of Sterling Shepard. And even Kenny Galladay has shown that he could be a yak receiver at times. Uh, also, linebacker is a weakness. I want to attack the linebackers in coverage. Please attack the linebackers in coverage, just like they did to us yes, uh, or Sunday on the Broncos. Attack the linebackers in coverage. Attack Landon Collins in coverage. He was not able to cover Caden Smith years ago. He couldn't cover Evan Ingram. So let's go after him in coverage as well as those linebackers. That's definitely a weakness for them right now. Uh, and let's talk offense right now. They're missing Curtis Samuel. Fitzpatrick is out. I really think I'm one of the, the people who think that, that Heineke might be a better fit for them. They're more of a defensive style team. Uh, Heineke is going to take less risks. He's going to turn the ball over less. And I think Heineke played really well against the Watch. I mean, against the Buccaneers. I really think he played really well, and I think that was kind of underrated. I think he's a, he's kind of flying under the radar. He is a mobile kind of quarterback. Not like he's, you know, Michael Vick or anything or even Daniel Jones, but he's a guy that can move around, extend plays, and throw the ball. And that's exactly what bit us in the bit us in the you know rear end on Sunday against Teddy Bridgewater, a guy that could extend plays. Now, do I expect Heineke to, to make those throws under pressure that Teddy Bridgewater was making? 
I don't expect Teddy Bridgewater to do that every single week because that was a really great performance. But Heineke can extend plays, and we have got to get to the quarterback and wrap him up when we have a chance to. It's it's no excuses. I really think that we should be able to, to, to rattle him, get in his face early and often like we did to Teddy Bridgewater, except we got to close the deal. We got to get some actual quarterback hits. We got to make our presence felt because I did see the defensive line for the Giants getting pressure, winning their matchups, but they just weren't finishing. I think that'll change this week. Uh, again, Diami Brown is their second receiver now because they're missing Curtis Samuel. Terry McLaurin, we already know what he is. He's he's a big player at any time, no matter who the quarterback is. Really, I mean, really a number one receiver. Those bona fide number ones, they pretty much make plays no matter who's out there. You had Kenny Galladay making plays with David Blau. It just happened. So Terry McLaurin is always going to be a threat. I'm not sure what the game plan is for that. How we'll, I think we'll probably play them straight up. Uh, so Terry McLaurin is there. Diami Brown is there too. And he drew, I think, a 60-yard penalty last week. Other than that, he didn't really do much. So he, him and Kadarius Tony both have negative two yards. But Diami Brown is someone that we cannot fall asleep on because he can be a big play guy at any given moment. He really can. So we can't fall asleep on Diami Brown. We can't fall asleep on Cam Sims. Or listen, if you're watching a football team fan and you're saying Cam, and I'm saying Cam Sims, I'm pretty sure you still have Cam Sims on your team. And Steven Sims was the guy that got cut. If not, you know who I mean. You know exactly who I'm talking about. So the the Sims wide receiver, we can't fall asleep on him either. And of course, Logan Thomas is always going to be a a, a red zone nightmare. So they have weapons. We got to continue to pressure the quarterback like we did last year, except we got to seal the deal. I think our secondary won't play as bad as last week because Washington does not have the same type of tight ends that Denver did. I mean, we they, Denver has athletic guys, guys that are really guys that are, you know, making plays in open space, people that are coming in on, on crossers and outrunning people. It's not really the same makeup, so I don't think they'll be able to do that to us. They also don't have the same depth at wide receiver. I mean, Tim Patrick is what? Like wide receiver four, wide receiver three. So they don't have that same depth right now, especially with Curtis Samuel out. So I expect this defense to bounce back, bounce back, and they should. Now, some things to wrap this up. We have to attack Sam Cosme. Attack him. Now, we don't have Joey Bosa at all. But we will have Aziz Ojolari playing against Sam Cosme. That should be an interesting matchup. I don't know if they played in college. I can't think of it. But Aziz Ojolari, Sam Cosme are going to be going against each other. Uh, but I do want to send some blitzes at him, make him have to think this entire game. He's a tackle. He's in a second game. I do not expect the Joey Bosa type of impact from anybody on the edge for the Giants. But I do expect us to target him, send blitzes on that side, and make him hesitate and think as you know as the game goes along. I do believe that we should win this game. Of course, I'm, I've been confident pretty much throughout this entirety of, of this these past two weeks. We're going to win this game. Uh, the Washington football team is a little banged up, and I don't think that their offensive line is up to par. On the interior, the Giants defensive line is going to start, start getting some pressure, just like they did last week. The, the Washington line is not horrible on the inside. But I think that the Giants defensive line is going to get pressure up the middle and their their edges. It's just only a matter of time before we start to get some pressure off the edge, uh, send some blitzes. Even if we're not able to get pressure with our edge rushers, we've shown that we will send the safety off the edge. And it seems like those guys always come through. And again, not everybody is going to make perfect throws under pressure across their body for pretty much an entire game like Teddy Bridgewater did. That is a once in a once in a couple of week kind of thing. So once again, thank you to our sponsor, BetQL, the only app you will need to beat your sports book. Find our information along with the 25% off discount code in the description of this video. Also, check out the special BetMGM offer in the description in order to receive a free year of BetQL and other sports book sign up offers and bonuses. We should win this game. Again, you're going to hear me say that over and over again. At the end of the day, I'm not predicting a blowout, but it's Washington. The Giants always handle business. You're going to be feeling a lot better about this team after this game. We laid an egg week one, and we will not do this 
two weeks in a row. We made it this deep into the video. Come on, just hit the subscribe button. I make Giants content primarily, draft content secondarily, and during the season, I'm gonna be doing a lot of reacting to pretty much most of the NFL games and everything NFL. So if you made it this deep, go ahead and join the D6 squad.